and I'm excited for these next few months and amping up my training a little bit and getting to a point where I feel like I, I can be one of the best in the world. Xavier Andrew Rattan Mays, born April 29th, 1994. Today's feature is the story of timing and how important it is when it comes to the journey you go through when your goal is making the NBA and staying there long term. Xavier Rattan Mays' story is a good example of that because he's a guy I really believe could have had a solid NBA career if this or that happened at a bit later or earlier date and at 29 he can still help an NBA team if timing and the situation is right. Of course, at this point, he's probably more focused on maximizing his ability to earn as much as he can while he's in his prime years, but skill-wise, development-wise, experience-wise, there's no doubt he's good enough to be in the league. He has great size, great leadership capabilities, and all the skill in the world, even if it wasn't shown consistently over his amateur career or all came together later than expected. In basketball, there's so many players out there just past their opportune window where if things happened a little different in past moments, their careers may have turned out drastically different than it has, but that's also the beauty of basketball and life itself. The cream does rise to the top and a lot of times the cream that rises above you is not because you weren't better than them before or can completely dominate them now. But what were the circumstances between you when that window to the NBA was opened? Was he more ready for that level? Did he show more potential to have a higher ceiling than you did? Or did he have a tool in his bag developed by then more aligned with where the game was headed at the time? It's a special word because it means a lot to mankind, but we usually know exactly what time it is, exactly when things that haven't even happened yet are supposed to, and can map out our daily lives around those 24 hours that God willing, you know is going to be there. But an even more important word, similar but quite different, is timing. From the same family, but this word is quite the opposite in that we can't predict surely when things are going to happen for us, who's going to be involved at the time that can affect my outcome, or if by the time you develop, you will have at least a skill that's familiar enough to scouts where they see your potential on the NBA level. Xavier Rattan Mays did actually make the NBA. For five games during the 2017-18 season, he had the opportunity to step on an NBA floor and show all the NBA teams that passed on him in the draft that was a mistake. But five games would be all he'd get for these reasons, all based around timing. What happened? Let's talk about it. Salute to TMC Larry for this request. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Xavier Rattan Mays is a 6'4 shooting guard point guard from Markham, Ontario, Canada that was a highly skilled player in high school who many believe should have been a McDonald's All-American his senior year. He came to the US like many Canadian-born players seeking better competition and a bigger stage to display their talent. He began his high school career at Christian Faith Center Academy but transferred to Huntington Prep because of issues with his credits being accepted by the NCAA. Although he'd have 30-point outbursts and even a 55-point game, he wasn't consistently the scorer he later became, averaging 13 points, nearly 7 assists and 5 rebounds. He was recruited by UConn, Illinois, Baylor, Florida State and a few others but chose FSU because for one, his stepfather, Theron Mays, played there, and two, he had the chance to play for a team that hadn't made the tournament in two years before he got there. He'd sit out his freshman year for eligibility reasons, but timing was on his side initially, as junior guard Devon Booker needed foot surgery earlier in the year, then junior guard Aaron Thomas was declared ineligible, thrusting Mays into the role of scoring leader. He averaged a career-high 14 points a game, 3 rebounds and 4 assists in 34 minutes a game. Over the next few seasons though, his production slipped and things went a different way than expected. Stun number 1, not leaving earlier. 
Coming into Florida State, things couldn't have aligned much better as an individual for Raton Mays. Because of the circumstances mentioned earlier, he was given the unique opportunity to play 34 minutes a game right away his freshman year and actually ended up leading them in scoring, just the second freshman in program history to do so. That year, he gained national notoriety in a game versus Miami where he erupted, to say the least, for 30 points in just over 4 minutes. Florida State still lost a game despite the performance, but it put Mays right where he needed to be, which was on the radar, especially at the time. Canadian basketball was at its peak, I'd say, as far as hype, from 2012 to 2014, and from there, they've put themselves on the map for having some of the best talent as of recent. Andrew Wiggins, of course, was at the height of that, leaving Kansas in 2014 after one season and becoming the first overall pick. Many saying he could be the next LeBron. His hype was definitely as if that was true, and let's not forget Canadian freshman sensation Tyler Ennis was also in the 2014 draft, selected in the first round 18th overall. The league was beginning to realize the potential of Canadian players and Rattan Mays could have elected to be right in the mix of that group. Yes, a year later, because of his redshirt year, but with all he accomplished as a freshman and having that one and done glow, as well as Canadian hype around him, there's no question he would have been selected in a weak draft class that had a total of 16 players drafted that never even played a game in the NBA. Yes, his three-point percentage, free throw percentage, and turnovers all could have been better, but he still led a high-level Division I school in the ACC in scoring as a freshman, had great size, hype, and potential to develop all on his side. As far as being a drafted NBA player, I think that was the right time to leave. Stun number two, lack of improvement. The last thing you want as a player on the NBA's radar that came back to school for another year is to regress in any way important to your position. When he did decide to come back to school, I understood his reasoning encouraging him to do so. When it comes to being streaky, Rattan Mays is a guy that could be the poster child on the floor. He'd have a game even from his high school days where he'd explode for 50 plus points and dominate in front of the biggest coaches, then you see that he's only averaging 13 points a game or in his sophomore year going for 30 against North Carolina, hitting 7 threes and 9 attempts off a game prior where he had 6 points, getting up 9 shots in 32 minutes. His scoring by the end of that season took a hit from nearly 15 points a game as a freshman to just over 11 points a game, although there were slight improvements in 3-point percentage, free throw percentage, and assist to turnover ratio. But as a scoring guard at a school you've had success before and now have two years under your belt, he needed to show more improvement. He was shooting 28% from 3 once again in a time that skill was the most coveted. If you look at his career, it's been ups and downs from 3, but he has good form and shown he could get extremely hot, but for him not being consistently an improved scorer, even the next year as a junior, his final year in college, it hurt his draft stock and made him go undrafted. Timing, again. He still had a year left of eligibility, but left after his least productive season, regressing in scoring once more free throw percentage, and minutes per game. Yes, he had other future NBA draft picks on his team, but having been there the longest and his talent, he was expected to show more improvement in the ways that mattered. Stunt number three still wasn't ready. And then Xavier Rattan Mays would get the opportunity he needed, signing a 10-day contract in the spring of his rookie year in the G League 2017-18 with the Memphis Grizzlies. After Zach Randolph left for Sacramento, the Grizzlies were open to a slight rebuild, looking for a young player that fit well with Marcus Gasol and Mike Conley at the shooting guard preferably, or even the point guard with Conley then being 30 years old. The Grizzlies seemed they were giving everyone a chance on a deep roster over the season with a guy named Marshawn Brooks leading them in scoring, 
not to mention Tyreek Evans having a year he hadn't since his rookie season, second to Brooks. In that opportunity, Mays did not play his best, taking a total of 14 threes, making one of them, had 18 assists over those 5 games and 11 turnovers, and shot 50% from the free throw line, never scoring more than 9 points. It's surprising because he'd go on to be a nice player in the G League and overseas, but at the time of his biggest opportunity, he wasn't ready in the right ways, nor were the Grizzlies ready to commit to him over the many players they had auditioning at the time. All in all, Xavier Rattan Mays is still a success. He's playing basketball for a living and has had some high levels of experience he can always cherish. I still like his game, maybe even more than before, and again, still believe in his talent on the NBA level, but for these reasons, his growth was stunning. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.